good morning. Nice to have a parking lot cleared out like it was. You should have seen it a couple days ago and yesterday even it was really, really bad. But uh, Life's been working hard. He put a lot of hours in here and got it cleaned up. Uh, the neighbors worked on it and put a strip through it for us and that was a lifesaver for our snowblower. So they got a few things opened up and they would have been back over to do more but it was sliding with this big machine it was pushing the snow because it was wet underneath and so it was a real mess to try to work with but anyway i appreciate the work that has gone into it and how wonderful it is we've had an offer to uh, for snow blowing service or snow removal service snow plowing by matt tiffany who his folks live right across here he was a student in their school and uh, by the the black lady that lives up the hill here she came down when I was shoveling the, the steps off out here yesterday, and she wanted to shovel the whole front of our driveway, our parking lot for us. And I talked to her. We've known her for uh, 10 years. She's from Africa. And uh, <clears throat> we had a great talk. We, we always do. We talked a lot about the Lord. She's a, uh, an old uh, Roman Catholic from um, from Africa and her grandpa was a was a father in the church and her dad was a uh, you know she everybody was a father and so I'm a father to her too but I told her she didn't have to make me her father I have to have no father and that's okay so just call me a pastor if you want her father, you know? so but we have always have a good time with her she's very very nice and very uh, uh, wonderful to know you know she has a uh, what a 20 some year old son that is handicapped and she cares for him her husband has left her um, but she keeps on going and she just lost her mom and her dad this week uh, this summer this year so uh, in Africa so that's uh, all things that are there let me while I'm just talking about these things uh, also mention that uh, Rob's getting along fairly well, as good as can be in the nursing home in uh, Oneana. Linda was taken to Fox Hospital, he doesn't even know when, and we don't, sometime after we left, and she was there, and then they found she's got a, a um, upper, GI upper GI problem, and so they transferred her from Fox to Bassett, so she's in Bassett now, from what Rob knows. Uh, these, these situations that they're just still trying to push off on COVID are just ridiculous. Uh, he, when they were taking her out, he wanted to talk to her, she wanted to talk to him, and they wouldn't let him. It was just, you know, that's bad. A husband and wife that can't even see each other. And he said, well, they wouldn't let me in the room, but I heard her and she's trying, she said my name was trying to get me to come listen, and she said, he said, I couldn't make out anything she said. And so it's, uh, it's terrible, you know, to not, he said, well, I at least want to kiss my wife goodbye if she's going to the hospital, you know, and they wouldn't let her. I, uh, to me, that uh, gets me. <laughs> uh, but that's regulations. That's the way they do things. And I, I'm just not, not at all pleased with the way they've broken up families and, and problems with, in the name of COVID, uh, which now they find has about a 0.8% death rate. Uh, and we have flus and everything else that are higher than that. There's at least a dozen things that are like that. Uh, but they're still making a big deal. Anyway, let's get off of that. Let's get on with God, okay? He's in control and he's still taking care of us and he still will do, uh, answer our prayers. And he is there to, he has made us. We have made ourselves. He has made us and we just need to, uh, Praise and adore him and forget the things of the world. Remember that he's in control. And he'll take care of these things, um, even if it puts us through hard times. He's there and willing to take us through. Okay, the song sheets today. We should have a song sheet with uh, number 105 and 127 on it. So let's turn to that. Number 105, praise God the Lord, ye sons of men. And there's uh, several sheets here that we're going to use this morning because they're songs that aren't readily available in the hymn books and we usually do sing them throughout the year. Again with Christmas music, uh, Christmas music 
many of the songs weren't even written for Christmas that we used. For instance, Joy to the World was not written with any, any intent of being a Christmas song. Uh, and yet it has become that uh, pretty much. And there are many other songs too that are the same way. And so just realize that uh, there is no specific day that we have to sing these songs or that we must sing these songs or what time of year is it and when was Christ born? Well, it doesn't tell us about his birth or we know the day that it was given, uh, but we can get pretty close from the Bible. However, we don't need to know that because it doesn't make any difference. He was born. God became flesh and dwelt among us. And so that's the important thing that we need to know. And then the rest of the birth was the growing up and ministering in Israel and going to the cross of Calvary to complete the whole process of paying for the sins of the whole world so that whosoever will may come and be saved through Jesus Christ. And then he was buried and he rose again the third day according to the scriptures. And uh, he's alive forevermore and he's coming again. And, uh, boy, that, that's the story, right? A nutshell right there, isn't it? And so we can praise God because of all these things, because he came and because he went, because he's risen, because he's now interceding for us in heaven, and he's gonna take us there if you're saved by the blood of Jesus Christ. The only way to get there. Let's look at 105 there and sing that. Praise God the Lord, ye sons of men. <clears throat> Praise God the Lord, ye sons of men, before His highest thrones. Today He opens heaven again and gives us His own Son. And gives us His own 
gate's gone, the bars are lifted, all you have to do is receive God's way into heaven. Jesus Christ, the finished work, how wonderful it is. He came, took on flesh, just so that he could go through what we do, so he understands. How would God understand what we go through? Well, I know he's omniscient. He understands everything in the world. He knows he made us, and, and we're but dust, and a little breath of his will just blow us away if he, if he allows it. But uh, he's wonderful, and he's just so, such a great God, and he cares about us, and God became flesh and dwelt among us. Incarnate, incarnate. Carnate is a flesh, and so he took on flesh. And he lived a life on this earth and was uh, then, of course, ridiculed and, and finally put to death. Uh, but that was all prophesied. And that was all that God knew would happen. Uh, and he knew that he would pay the debts of the whole world for sin. What a God. He had it all planned out. Uh, let me mention right now, so that while I think about it, I usually don't go through the bullets on it all, but um, next Sunday, December 25th, I've decided to have just one service. It'll begin at 11 o'clock. Now, if you're with family or you have things going on, uh, that's fine. We're going to have a time of just reading the traditional scriptures and uh, singing Christmas hymns and things uh, that you desire. And so that's pretty much going to be next next Sunday, next Sunday, next Sunday, wow, uh, I'm back, okay, <laughs> after being gone about two weeks, and so I'll, I'll catch up here, it'll be New Year's before I know it, uh, so uh, on Thursday, the 22nd, we'll be meeting here for prayer, singing, fellowship, whatever. I haven't fully decided what we'll do, but let's, uh, let's get together Thursday the 22nd if you're able and available. And then just a thank you note there on the other page of the boats and uh, how much we enjoy the, the love and generosity of the church, you folks, and uh, we give thanks to God for you. It was a blessing on the trip to have some extra cash in our pocket to, to use. Uh, we had a wonderful, wonderful trip, and um, it's always a joy coming back to serve here. Now, we had a good time with the, the funeral of our, the matriarch of the Ryan family, and uh, she was 97 years old, and it just followed her uh, other sister uh, by, what, a few months. Uh, she, she also passed away, and, and then uh, Nida, who you know, we went to, uh, that was the, our, ch our children's other grandmother, and she went downhill after she lost her sister. Uh, so their uncle, our Uncle George, uh, uh, her, the last living sibling is George. He's the pastor of the church, been the pastor of the church he started now for well over 60 years. So that kind of, if you kind of figure it automatically in your head, he's 94 years old, still going full steam. And just, uh, what? Just had his birthday. Yeah, I had a birthday. He says, I don't, it's just an anniversary of when I was born. I was born, I'm just doing what God wants me to do. And he says, I don't even look at days. I don't look at birthdays. That's not, a, not part of anything I need to know. I just keep going, and every day that I wake up and I'm still serving the Lord, well, it's another day for the Lord. And, and uh, that's the way he looked at life, and that's the way he goes. And uh, he and his wife, Judy, she's also up there, and the, they just keep on going. I mean, boy, she can sing. But uh, he did the funeral for his older sister, and it was just awesome to, to hear his testimony because he lived with her all his life, you know, to, to the... Uh, were separated some during the latter years, but a lot of the years they were together, but all their childhood and stuff. And so who could give a better testimony of a, of a life than somebody who's been with you all that time? And so it was wonderful. Uh, we weren't at the funeral, we weren't able to bury her because the weather, we had so much snow and it was uh, mushy underneath and we couldn't get up into the cemetery behind the church. Now it's a church about the size of this and it didn't even have a heating system in it until 
recent years, they put in a gas system. We turned it on and I think we got the temperature up to 45 in there or something <laughs> while we were there. Uh, so there's no water, no plumbing, nothing in the church. It's, uh, they have a little reception hall out back in a shed. So it's, uh, it was neat. It was really wonderful. Great reunion of the Ryans from all over the country that we've known uh, over the years. And so we thank the Lord for the opportunity he gave us and how he orchestrated it, lined everything out for us. Just to clarify, that church is separate from the one Uncle George passed. Oh, right, right, yeah. Where she was, she and her husband were buried in Mary Hill. That's where he pastored her husband, Nida's husband. So, so Pastor Paul and Nida uh, Ryan, who were the, our son-in-law's parents, they pastored in that church, and that's where they had their, their graves at and things. So uh, that's why the funeral was there. Yeah. Thank you for that. Now, any, has anybody been in contact with the Cunes the last week or so? Anybody hear anything? Because they were going to be doing a lot of traveling. Okay. And, uh, they appreciated the calls and you know, love to everybody. Very good. Thank you very much. I was hoping somebody had heard from him because we haven't contacted anybody. It's been a crazy couple weeks as far as uh, going, 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 and keeping up with the kids and the grandkids and great grandkids and all the things that were going on. So, but a wonderful, wonderful week. Okay, let's take that song sheet now and sing number 127. As with gladness, men of old, did the guiding star behold. As with joy, they held its light, leading onward, beaming bright. So we just need to be led by the Lord. And look at that. We talk about them and hear from them, and here they are. So welcome to the, welcome to the king. Amen. Seven on that song sheet. As with gladness, men of old, did the guiding star behold. As with joy they filled its light, leading onward, beaming bright. So most gracious love may be. Evermore be led by thee. 
Father, thank you, Lord, that uh, you have saved us by your grace. And Father, that we can sing praise and hallelujah to you. Praise the Lord. And Lord, how wonderful it is to know you personally through Jesus Christ, to know you, Father, as our Father indeed. And Father, we thank you, Lord, for making that possible. And so, Lord, now we ask that your Holy Spirit would guide and direct today, that we would hear from you, each one, what they need to hear. Father, we just praise your name and give you all the glory, laud, and honor that you deserve, Father. Thank you for being here meeting with us today. And we pray these things in Jesus' name, and the Holy Spirit, my guide, and Father, uh, the great love that you have for us. Amen. <clears throat> Let's take our Bibles and get into this. We're uh, <laughs> spending a lot of extra time here letting you know what's been and what's happening and all these things. So uh, let's see how far we can get through this today. <clears throat> As we look at why did John the Baptist come before Jesus Christ? Why did he come? Now, this is going to be uh, running into the forerunner enunciation of the next hour, but why did Jesus come? Look at Luke chapter 1. I think this gives us a real good synopsis of it. But Luke chapter 1, we see all the coming of John the Baptist and of Jesus Christ, and we'll be looking at that next hour more thoroughly throughout, but just look at Luke chapter 1, beginning in verse 75. Why was John before Jesus Christ? Verse 75, in holiness and righteousness uh, before him, well, uh, <laughs> that there's, the mercy is coming there. We're starting that kind of in the middle. But anyway, this is talking about John the Baptist. And holiness and righteousness before him all the days of our life. And thou, child, John the Baptist, shall be called the prophet of the highest. For thou shalt go before the face of the Lord to prepare his ways. Uh, the prophet of the highest. Who's the highest? Jesus Christ, God Almighty. He's the highest. And here's the prophet to the highest is John the Baptist. Now, we'll see later today that uh, had this, uh, they accepted him, then he would have been the Elijah, which was for to come before his uh, setting up the kingdom. And this is all still gonna happen. But right now, uh, he says, thou shalt go before the face of the Lord to prepare his ways and to give knowledge of salvation unto his people by the remission of their sins. Through the tender mercy of our God, whereby the day spring from on high hath visited us, to give light to them that sit in darkness. This is what John the Baptist was sent before Jesus Christ for, okay? For all these things. To give light to them that sit in darkness and in the shadow of death, to guide our feet unto the way of peace. And the child grew and waxed strong in spirit when in the deserts, Till the day of his showing unto Israel. So with that in mind, we're going to go into some scripture now and look at uh, other scripture, look at these things. Um, let's look at, let's begin in Matthew, well, now let's go ahead and go to Matthew 11. Matthew 11. Begin in verse 1, and it came to pass when Jesus had made an end of uh, com commanding his twelve disciples, he departed thence to teach and to preach in their cities. Now when John had heard in the prison the works of Christ, he sent two of his disciples and said unto him, Art thou he that should come, or do we look for another? Jesus answered and said unto them, Go and show John again those things which ye do hear and see. The blind receive their sight, the lame walk, the lepers are cleansed, the deaf hear, the dead are raised up, the poor have the gospel preached to them. And blessed is he whosoever shall not be offended in me. And as they departed, Jesus began to say unto the multitudes concerning John, What went ye out into the wilderness to see? A reed shaken with the wind? 
But what went ye out for to see? A man clothed in soft raiment? Behold, they that wear soft clothing are in king's houses. But what went ye out for to see? A prophet? Yea, the Lord agrees. Yeah, he's a prophet, okay. Now there are people that don't think he was a prophet. They think that uh, until John means John wasn't a prophet. And that perverts the whole word of God. Jesus Christ called him a prophet, a prophet of the highest. Uh, but anyway, verse 9, but what went you out for to see? A prophet? Yea, I say unto you, and more than a prophet. Uh, he was Elijah, which was for to come if they had received the kingdom at that time. And for this is he of whom it is written, Behold, I send my messenger before thy face, which shall prepare the way, thy way before thee. Uh, so here he is... Uh, John the Baptist has come, his he's the messenger of Jesus Christ to prepare the way. Verily I say unto you, among them that are born of women, I have not risen a greater than John the Baptist. Notwithstanding, he that is least in the kingdom of heaven is greater than he. And from the days of John the Baptist until now, the kingdom of heaven suffereth violence, and the violent take it by force. Now, you have to understand, they're looking for the kingdom to be set up on the earth, the earthly kingdom of Jesus Christ on the earth. And so, uh, it, when it says, uh, that's the difference between the kingdom of God, which is within you, and the kingdom of heaven. Now, it can be, the kingdom of heaven can be either way, depending on the context and the usage of it. Uh, but here, it's specifically talking about the earthly kingdom, the reign of Jesus Christ. Um, it says, from the days of John the Baptist until now, the kingdom of heaven suffereth violence. Uh, the, trying to set up the kingdom on the world is suffering violence. It's a physical kingdom. The kingdom of God is within you, and it's a spiritual kingdom, okay? Now, there will be a time then when the kingdom of heaven and the kingdom of God with Jesus Christ on the earth as the king, they are combined. It is a physical kingdom of, that will be ruled by out of Jerusalem and by the Jews will all be gathered there. That's the physical kingdom. But the kingdom of God in Christ Jesus is also present in every soul, okay, that's there. And so uh, that's not taken place yet because they rejected the physical kingdom when he came. And so the violent take it by force. Uh, that's the physical kingdom. Who's taking it by force? The violent, the scribes and Pharisees. That's what Jesus Christ, who he was up against when he was on the earth. Uh, the poor people and the simple people uh, took Jesus Christ for their Messiah. And they followed him into Jerusalem on that triumphant entry day the, the week before he was uh, murdered. And, and so we see that uh, the kingdom of God is in a spiritual kingdom, kingdom of heaven is the physical kingdom. Now verse 13, for all the prophets and the law prophesied until John. Was John a prophet? Yes. Jesus Christ already said that, didn't he? Uh, in, until can be either inclusive or exclusive. And so you have to know the context. And here, word, the word of God, uh, checking with the word of God, you see he's a prophet. Okay? And I say that because maybe you don't, aren't even aware there are many Baptists that don't believe John the Baptist was a prophet. Okay? Uh, <laughs> believe it or not, uh, there's a lot of things Baptists don't believe that are scriptural, okay? There's a lot of heresy throughout the Baptist name, just like in all the churches. So we're, we're not an exclusive group uh, that all, all of a sudden everything is perfect. <laughs> now, under the name, I'm talking about the name. There's no reason for people to be that uh, ignorant uh, if they just study their Bible and let God uh, tell them what it says. And if you will receive it, Verse 14, if you will receive it, uh, what is it talking about? If you will receive the kingdom of heaven, the kingdom on the earth. He came to offer the kingdom to set up his reign on the earth. If you will receive it, this is Elias, which was for to come. Now, Elias is the, going from Greek to English, uh, it's the Elijah uh, in the New Testament. Uh, and we know that, well, we'll see that in a moment, that uh, he will be one of the prophets, the two prophets, Moses and Elijah, coming. Uh, verse 15, he that hath ears to hear, let him hear. 
Listen to what God says. Amen. Uh, let's go on to chapter 17. Well, yeah, let's look at chapter 17 while we're there. We'll just kind of go through this here. In chapter 17, uh, again, we, this is the, where the Lord Jesus Christ shows uh, Peter, James, and John his second coming. They view the second coming of Jesus Christ with Moses and Elijah. And they see the glory of Jesus Christ at his second coming. Uh, after six days, Jesus taketh Peter, James, and John, his brother, uh, his, and John, his brother, and bringeth them up into an high mountain apart, and was transfigured before them, and his face did shine as the sun, and his raiment was white as the light. Now the Ancient of Days has that description also, and God himself is a, is a white as light. Um, verse 3, Behold, there appeared unto them Moses and Elias talking with him. This is at the second coming, and Jesus Christ is showing them. Now if we'd have gone back uh, into the end of chapter 16 there, you'd see that uh, Jesus Christ had, there was a controversy going on among the disciples, who's going to be the greatest and who's going to do this and that. Uh, and then it says, uh, verse 28 of the last chapter there, he ends with, Verily I send you, there are be some standing here which shall not taste death till they see